Ooh, an update. All right, let's see here. Hey Failroaders, Jash here. Some of you may have seen the hands-free reactor video released in August. Well, unfortunately, as of October 5th, the Bang Bang reactor controller design is dead. The hoist the sails update has fundamentally changed how circuits control the reactor inputs. No longer is it possible for them to snap the turbine output or fusion reaction from 0 to 100 in a single frame. Instead, the bar slowly... inches along at a snail's pace. Come on, you can do it any day now, move you piece of sh- It became apparent that a solution needed to be put forward, something that could outperform the automatic control system while still using as few components as possible. Well, uh, I just barely accomplished the first goal. Barely. It's not perfect, but after a few hours of tinkering and design, I think I came up with something elegant and simple enough to present. Simple is in heavy air quotes. It's a bit of a beast. I think the easiest way to explain this monstrosity is by breaking it up into its core parts. The most simple part of the design is the turbine output. Optimal turbine output is calculated using this formula. The maximum output value is not something we can get from the reactor itself, so the minimum amount of components we can use for this is 2. This also means that you'll have to look up or otherwise find out what the maximum output of your reactor is to adapt this design to any sub. You'll need a divide component and a memory component. You need to set the memory component to the reactor's maximum output in kilowatts divided by 100. In the case of the dugong, the reactor can supply 3000 kilowatts. Divide that by 100 and we have 30. Moving on to the divide component, first set the clamp max value to 100, and the clamp min value to 0. This is important to reduce oscillation when the load value exceeds the maximum power output. For wiring, we take the load value out signal from the reactor and put it into signal in 1. The memory signal out goes to the signal in 2. The signal out of the divide component plugs into the reactor's set turbine output pin. The next logical step is to figure out how to calculate the optimal fusion reaction levels. This is a little tricky as there are three variables we need to consider. The current turbine output value, the current heat potential, labeled as fuel out, and the current temperature of the reactor. Let's focus on the first two to start. For this we need four more components. A memory component, an adder component, and two divide components. I have them arranged here such that the two divide components are at the top and the adder and memory components are below, to better keep track of the components. Set the memory component value to 50. The wiring here is a bit more complex. Take the signal out signal from the turbine output circuit we previously made and plug it into one of the adder inputs. Take the output from the new memory component and wire it into the other signal in input. Take the signal out signal from the adder and wire it to the signal in one port in the leftmost divide component. Let's quickly move to the rightmost divide component for a second. Take the fuel out signal from the reactor and plug it into signal in one. Take the memory output and plug it into signal in two. Then take the signal out from the right divide component and plug it into signal in two of the left divide component. So far so good but we're only about halfway done. 
the circuit does well to set the fusion reaction to the optimal level under stable load conditions, but it doesn't handle over temperature conditions or power fluctuations well, and this design alone can lead to reactor fires. Now this could probably be done better, I'm sure, but I quickly put together a circuit that handles these issues and vastly mitigates oscillations within the system. It should keep temperatures at a relatively sane level while still delivering near maximum output. We will need three more memory components, two subtract components, one divide component, and one multiply component. I have them arranged in this configuration for simplicity. From left to right, set the memory components values to 5000, 1000, and 1 respectively. An important step is to go into the rightmost subtract component and set clamp max to 1.1 and clamp min to 0. We'll start with the leftmost subtract component. Wire temperature out from the reactor to signal in 1 and the above memory component output to signal in 2. The signal out of this goes into the signal in 1 of the divide component. The memory component above the divide component goes into its signal in 2 input. The output of the divide component goes into the rightmost subtract component's signal in 2 input. The memory component above the rightmost subtract component gets plugged into signal in 1. The output of that subtract component is plugged into the signal in 1 component of the multiply component. You remember the divide component that is currently below the multiply component? We never connected that output to anything, so let's plug that into the signal in 2 port of the multiply component. Finally, the signal out of the multiply component can go into the reactor's set fission rate connector. And we're finally done. Did you follow any of that? Yes? No? Not to worry. I've uploaded a reactor controller demo onto the workshop along with a guide that will have a schematic and explanation of the circuit in better detail. These tools should help you understand the circuit a little better and give you some hands-on testing and the ability to tweak the design to your needs. I'll, uh, I'll be honest, I wanted to give a better explanation of how I came up with the design that I did. I, I built a spreadsheet and I even poked around the official source code for formulas on how the system operated. Uh, and despite this, at the time of recording, I can't for the life of me explain how this magic works. Uh, that said, if anyone has suggestions on how this design could be improved, or if you have any thoughts or questions on the video, please feel free to leave a comment below. Oh, and drop a like, maybe subscribe, hit that bell, join a live stream, leave a tip, take out the target, do a little jig, have yourself a wonderful day, and we'll see you around.